Welcome everyone to this webinar hosted um, by the and sponsored by the Accrediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges with support from the Lumina Foundation. This is the Degree Qualification Profile Project at Copper Mountain College. My name is Joe DeSantis. I am a speech professor and division chair for Humanities and Fine Arts. And our, my colleagues with me today are uh, Dr. David Norton and Dr. Colin McLaughlin. Uh, David and Colin, would you please introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Um, I'm David Norton. I'm the uh, coordinator for developmental education at Copper Mountain College. And I'm Colin McLaughlin. I am an instructor of mathematics at Copper Mountain College. Uh, today we're here to introduce you to the Copper Mountain College's degree use of the degree qualification profile project. Other individuals who have participated through this process include um, adjunct professor Maureen Stein from Early Childhood Development Education and Child Development, adjunct professor Chris Parman from Communi Communication Studies, and we had a brief visit by Professor Emeritus and current trustee, uh, Professor Greg Gilbert, for the bo uh, Board of Trustees for the college. At CMC, uh, we were very thankful for this project and had a lot of positive responses and positive outcomes because of it. Um, our participating faculty worked with peers from other California community colleges and the CSUS CSU San Bernardino faculty, which was a wonderful experience. Um, different aspects of the degree level SLOs that we addressed included things such as phrasing and language choices, different areas of learning. Um, in California, we have what's called the 10 plus 1 in terms of our academic senate and academic purview over um, different professional matters. Uh, the DQP has this wonderful thing called the 5 plus 1, the different categories or areas of learning that it covered, which was outstanding. Uh, we talked about different assessment methods, different instructional approaches, and uh, we had the ability to um, connect our institutional, our program, and our course level outcome. David and Colin, feel free, please, to interject at any time. Um, the project at CMC, uh, faculty were provided with information and assisted in better understanding the nature of course, program, and institutional student learning outcomes. Uh, the workshops we attended help us conceptualize the role of the outcomes in higher education and as part of the institution and our courses, the value of assessment, the value of having good, well-written, and easily assessed outcomes, and the nature of SLOs, um, both in terms of the ongoing education of our students, but also at our local institution. Workshops also provided us with a great deal of support, research, resources, and peers to talk to uh, to revise and review our local approach. As a very small college with a total of, I believe, 40 full-time faculty members, the additional ability to speak with other experts in their fields and experts in the area of student learning outcomes and assessment was remarkable. Yeah, I agree with that. A big part of the seminars was putting us in touch with different groups like the, the NILOA and the Tuning Project and the Threshold Project, which I thought was a very interesting part of the presentation, <laughs> learning about the threshold concepts as a guide for writing our learning outcomes. Um. Other major activities that we undertook with the assistance of those different groups and our new friends and peers included uh, having us eventually lead into formal discussions in multiple sessions of our academic senate and curriculum committee meetings. Uh, we also reported on the details of these trainings to the board of trustees, to our chief instructional officer, our president. Um, we also had a presentation or two at different in-service training uh, flex days, um, all staff and professional development activities. And in addition, uh, we uh, engaged in uh, submitting reports to the Board of Trustees uh, concerning the project and worked closely with our Chief Instructional Officer um, and faculty here at the college uh, to explain to uh, all those constituents what we had learned at the DQPP meetings um, uh, every month uh, and how we might implement uh, some, some of those uh, 
um, um, activities that 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 we uh, engaged in at those meetings, how we might incorporate those here on campus. The materials that they handed out, the different packets, um, and the other activities and resources were outstanding. Uh, we passed those out to other faculty members, including our accreditation liaison officer, our uh, student learning outcome assessment coordinator, as well as our curriculum chair and our uh, transfer articulation officers. Uh, major other activities undertaken by CMC related to the DQPP also inc included some implementation, implementation in the mathematics discipline. Um, I'll ask Colin, Dr. McLaughlin to address that as one of our senior math faculty. Yeah, definitely. So one of the projects at the DQPP seminars was uh, working through their program specification worksheet to help us define our degree and our goals for our graduates in the math program. And what I've done with that is basically replace our program description that we had currently, which was a, a couple sentences and very nonspecific, and was able to work in a lot more material, stuff about applied learning, the different career pathways for mathematics majors, uh, civic learning, uh, a lot of new areas that weren't addressed by our original program description. Another set of major activities that we undertook uh, at CMC was in my area. I teach in the communication studies discipline. Um, at the time, in the fall semester, as we worked through the majority of these workshops, I was also acting as the interim CIO for the college, um, and I wasn't able to take as hands-on a, a role in changing um, my curriculum at the time. But once the semester was over and we have a new uh, dean in place, I was able to start working on our course outlines of record and um, at this time we have in process uh, imp implemented changes in the course level, program level, and um, the course level and program level outcomes for the communication program, our AAT, as well as our local AA. Uh, and we have also changed a number of the course level descriptions to align them well with the program outcomes. And I loved the language in the 5 plus 1, so I was trying to implement a great deal of that language in the words and choices I made with my course outcomes. Um, I also was able to make some positive revisions to my catalog descriptions um, based on what I learned from these workshops. There is discussion going on in other disciplines. Um, I'm lucky, like I said, we have a small faculty. I'm the only full-time faculty member in my discipline, so I have committee meetings of one. Um, our academic senate is also having an ongoing and robust dialogue dealing with, of course, our, our curriculum, our programs, but also has started talking about the college admission statement and making sure that things are interconnected and that we engage in integrated planning and that we're discussing our institutional learning outcomes on a regular basis. Um, Dr. McLaughlin had discussed the math brief, the program briefly, and they are working diligently to have ongoing and sustainable implementation of the projects. Of, of the project, um, different changes in processes and documents at CMC that have been going on as a result of this project include, as mentioned, uh, I've been making revisions to the communication studies. Uh, program and courses. Uh, we have a dialogue uh, regarding the actual process that we follow in different committees and the elements of different documents forms that we use. One of the great forms that was uh, shown to us at the workshop was the um, what was the David uh, Colin, what was the name of that form that talked about that listed the different career paths that students could take. Yeah, I think that was the degree specification form that covered the all the aspects of a degree from the different angles, like the career pathways and the applied learning, and it, not just the the program description, but the the describing the value of the degree from all these different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the 
degree specification form. I, I, I noticed I wrote it, we wrote it down on the bottom of the slide. Um, that form was outstanding. We've shown it to our counselors uh, and to the other um, faculty who advise students in their uh, career, academic and career paths, both the transfer and the vocational areas. It, it, it's an outstanding way for us to provide them insight into what is the goal, what are they trying to do, and what futures could they look into uh, from any given discipline. Different areas of key learning that we've engaged in thanks to the degree quote qualification profile project. Uh, we've been able to revise how we perceive the links between and the hierarchy of programs, um, courses, and institutional student learning outcomes. Uh, we've been able to draw connections between different areas of the institution and student learning. David or Colin, I think I heard you with an additional comment. Yeah, about the first point. It really turned our understanding of institutional learning outcomes upside down. And rather than seeing them as the final product of our institution, of our graduates, but as something that would just infuse all aspects of the institution, our administrative units, not just our uh, our programs. It, and it, uh, it was helpful because it allowed us to um, really foreground the importance of the program level outcomes, um, and that that was the uh, that's really the pinnacle that that we should be concerned with. Um, so that was a that was a a useful idea that we also were were able to bring back to the faculty here on campus. Yeah, that was actually mind blowing to me. I had always, based off of our last accreditation process um, of how we had initially jumped onto the SLO and SLO assessment um, train, we had gotten into the mindset of sequence, course level to program level to institutional level. And through the discussions we had, it made way more sense to me about the program levels being the pinnacle and the supporting nature of the course and the institutional level outcome. Uh, we were also, as a group, able to be better informed as to best practices for student learning outcome design to assessment methodologies and to see hands-on what other people at other institutions were doing. Um, it was really, really helpful to be able to hear about the way that outcomes were being assessed, the way that implementation of um, assessments and that research was being used to change different planning processes at other schools, how faculty were implementing what they learned from assessments into their course design, and particularly, and David and Colin, um, let me know if I'm speaking for everyone on this, being able to talk to other faculty in the same discipline as myself made that even exponentially more valuable because I could talk very specifically about things like on syllabi and the assignments that I give in exams or quizzes or tests um, besides the overall assessment, if like a pretest, test post-test, whatever I might do for each outcome, but integrating those outcome assessments into a number of different factors in my class. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, no, I agree. I, the collaborative nature of the uh, DQPP was uh, very helpful. Being able to meet with other members of your discipline, um, mine, uh, other than being coordinator for developmental ed at, here at the college, I'm also in um, uh, English is my my background, and it was you know, very useful to be able to get to together with um, other members of the English faculty from uh, other colleges in the area and have those discussions. Uh, and a unique I, value for, go ahead, Colin. Oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to echo David's comments. It was very useful to network with other math instructors from community colleges and to share and pick up what they're doing. And sometimes their programs are very different than ours in their sequence of classes, but uh, their outcomes, uh, there was a lot of commonality there, and it was very valuable. It was fun and interesting that we often often had at our college, we occasionally do things like writing across the curriculum or reading across the curriculum. 
Um, and it was also interesting that we had numerous faculty across different curriculum. So while we had one-on-one -on -one and small group discussions within a discipline, we were also able to see how uh, the outcomes crossed over between disciplines, like critical thinking could be part of math, could be part of English, how civic learning is part of math, part of speech, part of English, and now it overlaps into so many different areas. And an additional area of training that it gave us, particularly as participants, was I, I developed a number of skills and an ability to talk about these topics um, with other faculty much more easily. It, it was always more of a challenge having a group discussion at our different training events or in our different committees. Um, having participated in these workshops gave me a vocabulary and a comfort level with this topic that I, I never anticipated. Uh, David, would you like to cover the future plans? Uh, sure. Uh, being um, a part of the DQPP, um, with, we had a number of discussions about how we can implement it and, and um, make it part of our ongoing planning and curriculum process. So um, uh, our future plans include ongoing implementation of those lessons um, using the materials that were provided to us on, at those monthly meetings. Um, also, uh, uh, engaging uh, other DQPP leaders to, to visit our college, uh, potentially uh, present um, uh, uh, workshops for professional development and our flex activities that, that we have usually a, a, a week prior to the school beginning in the fall. Um, as well as uh, uh, engaging our students on campus. Uh, uh, I, I'm also the advisor for the student government group on campus um, and being um, um, uh, involved in that, that process, uh, I, uh, students uh, become very engaged in the whole instructional uh, process and, and also uh, uh, are engaged because of our shared governance structure. Uh, in addition, we want to try to maintain our relationship with um, uh, Cal State San Bernardino, where most of our students transfer to, and uh, 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 continue to have a dialogue with our colleagues uh, at the Cal State uh, campus as well. So I think, uh, for all of us who attended these seminars, that we were all personally impacted and improved by our participation with our peers and with the leaders from the DQPP. We as Joe already mentioned, a lot of growth in our expertise and our comfort in talking about the concepts of student learning outcomes. Uh, just a increased awareness of student learning outcomes and learning at all the different levels, but not just, I mean, from every way that the college touches our students, from participation in clubs, service programs, that's part of our civic learning from uh, obviously our courses and our graduates have their own learning outcomes, but at all levels we can uh, look at how our college touches our students and provides them with learning. <laughs> As David mentioned, the networking and the relationship building, not just with our peers from other community colleges, but uh, putting in touch with all these different groups with goals that complement the DQPP, like the Threshold Project the Nailoa, the tuning project, all these different people, they have their list serves, they have their <coughs> webinars. Uh, just like it says here, a treasure trove of useful supporting documents and materials. And uh, I think the project has potential to really change the, the environment at our institution. It, it is a small institution. And if enough people buy into the goals of the project, we can implement these pretty rapidly. <laughs> it's improved our quality of discussion in key committees and groups. Like we've had a flex presentation already. We have participation from our SLO coordinator, from our vice president of academic affairs. All these people know about the project and have been exposed to its ideas. And uh, Part of the SLO process, of course, the, the final part, closing the loop, is this ongoing dialogue and review of our learning outcomes and the continuous 
assessment and revision and <coughs> excuse me and obviously this is going to help that process and keep it going thank you um, if anyone would like to get in touch with us they can contact me at j d e s a n t i s at cmccd.edu or um, if you go back to the other side you can see the email addresses for uh, Dr. McLaughlin or Dr. Norton. Uh, we'd really like to say thank you to the pro grant project manager Laurel Hunter and to the director of the project uh, Dr. Krista Johns. They were outstanding and wonderful to work with um, as were everyone from our other uh, uh, California community colleges in our region as well as the CSU San Bernardino faculty who participated. Uh, we really appreciated their time. Thank you.